If you're anything like me, then you've watched a million tutorials on YouTube on how to improve this skill and get better at this thing. And today I'm going to show you how I color graded and broke down the lighting of the scene you're about to watch. But I also want to share with you some things that you might not have thought about that will actually improve your filmmaking. So stay tuned for that and thanks for being here. Something's off The way you look and how you pause When you talk I think you said enough You said you love for me Something brand new You said this is something You would never do Here we are in your car Let me see who you are Who you really are if I'm being honest, I'm kind of obsessed with that moody, hazy, cinematic film look. Danny Gewurz here on YouTube crushes that style. I don't actually personally know him, I just thought his talent deserved a shout out, so go check him out. Anyway, I've never actually intentionally tried to create that moody look, and so that's what I was aiming for in the video that you just watched. But before I break down how I color graded that video, let me show you how I went about lighting the scene. So the light was not set up the way you see it right now. I actually had it first suspended above the talent, and I used this extra arm to do that. And so I suspended this light directly above, top down, right here, over where she was sitting. And then I also wanted to backlight her. So I had this, the light similarly set up here, but instead of facing this way, that's still not right. Pretend it was over in this corner, and it was a little bit higher and angled down to where she was sitting right here. I then had her here and I filmed and that's where I got those shots of the back light on her arm and the back of her head. Um, so those are the two different lighting techniques I used in this video. Pretty simple. I used this reflector once when she was down here. Um, with the back light I reflected it back onto her face. So I kind of set it up up against this couch and just had it reflect back into her face. Okay, this is going to be really poor lighting. I'll use my flashlight, but I thought this was kind of funny. I used an Arizona iced tea, and if you can see this, this, this is a dumbbell because <laughs> I don't actually have sand in my sandbags to weigh down um, the light when it was top down over her because when it was suspended top down, it was obviously uh, countering that weight pretty poorly, and that actually worked. It kept it stable. <laughs> This is the light that I use, it's the Godox SL60 watt, and this is a big newer collapsible softbox. Huge, huge softbox. It comes with a remote, and I always keep my light at 5600 Kelvin because I like the nice white light, and that matches daylight and makes it super easy to white balance. And I also used atmosphere in a can to make some of the hazy look in here. To be honest, it's not as good as if I had like a machine. But you can see how that creates some of the haze. Look at how nice that looks. Oh, I love that look. And yeah, so that's pretty much it. It's a pretty simple lighting setup. I only used one light the whole time in two different positions. I used a really, really low aperture on the camera. My ISO was set around 400. The aperture was like 1.4. And I was shooting at 24 frames per second at a 50th of a shutter speed. And yeah. Every time I watch a video like this on YouTube, I always wish that they would break down everything that they did to achieve that look. Because obviously, if I shot that same video on an iPhone, it would not have looked the same. So I'm going to try to do that for you today. So I borrowed this lens from my friend. It's a broken on fully manual 35mm lens, and I attached a Promise filter to it. If you don't know what a Promise filter does, it kind of diffuses the highlights and makes everything a little bit more dreamy. Another thing is my Canon EOS R can only shoot at its highest quality externally. And so I use this Atomos Ninja 5, it's an external recorder, to record 4K 10-bit log out of the Canon EOS R. A quick breakdown, shooting in log gives you better dynamic range, and dynamic range is kind of your camera's ability to preserve the highlights from blowing out and the blacks from clipping super dark. And 10-bit is a better color space, so it makes my color grading easier in post. Okay, so let's hop into the color grading. A few things I want to know first. One, I am not a professional colorist. This is just based on my personal preference and my personal taste. If you want a really technical review, I'm sure you can find that somewhere else on YouTube. 
but I'm going to show you how I color graded this specific video. Two, yes I edit in Final Cut Pro, I know there are many opinions about that. I actually color graded this footage in DaVinci as well, just to practice and see if I could achieve the same look in Final Cut Pro, because DaVinci is better for color grading. So there's that. <laughs> okay, so if you press Command 7 on the Mac, it will bring up your waveform. You can also see your vector scope here, uh, but I like to start with the waveform. What I do first every time is I go over to my exposure, and I start bringing down these darks close to the zero. And then I bring up my midtones, bring up my highlights. A mistake I used to make often is I would bring all of my highlights up to 100 to use the full um, spectrum of 0 to 100. However, I realized that I don't actually like when my highlights are really at 100. I personally like them when they're more down here um, so that there's a nice roll off. Uh, in this footage, this is pretty dark footage, so you're not going to see much fill up all the way up here. You see this one tiny line right here, which I actually have too high already. I have it past 100. But that's this little bright light on the ring right here. Anyway, so I'm going to bring this back down to zero. So I look at the waveform, but I also kind of just do it by eye and what I personally like. And then I go over to my curves. And I add in some contrast here, and I bring those darks down again, bring some light up here, and bring the middle up too. I always put a point in the middle and just slightly adjust that. It doesn't look good on every clip, um, but you can see the difference that those curves make right there. It brings a lot more detail to it. Something that I also do occasionally, it looks good on most clips, is I'll bring this red bottom part and just bring it in just a tad. And that brings some teals back into the blues. Um, if you watch the blues, you can see how that turned a bit more teal, especially on the shoes. Um, and that's something that I like to do, just my personal taste. And then next, I go to Hue and Saturation Curves. And this is where I start adjusting specific things. So skin tone is pretty important. The vector scope will show you your skin tone. This is the line right here that shows you skin tone. And so something that I like to do is take the crop tool and you can crop in right there on your skin tone so you can see where this is lining up with that line. Go back into hue and saturation curves, select that skin tone, and make sure that's right in line with that skin tone line. Like I said, it was pretty close, so it's just a super minor adjustment. Um, We'll go back and take this crop off, and that's a pretty natural skin tone. Go back to hue and saturation curves, and now I'll just do some creative things. I want to bring this, these blues a little bit more teal. And this one, you can really get that teal orange look, so this is a really easy clip to get that because her skin tones and these jeans just make it super easy. Um, I sometimes like to desaturate my colors a little bit, so I usually desaturate blues just a tad bit. Um, and then bring up just a tiny bit my skin tone, bring that saturation up a little bit more. You can see what this changed, very minor changes, but that skin tone looks a lot more natural if you can see that slight change. Here I'll go 100% in, there, you can see that change a little bit more red into the skin. Let's go back to fit. Something else I'd like to do is click on the Luma Sat curve. By the way, you can do any of this stuff in any program. It all just looks a little bit different, but it's all achievable in every single editing program. So if you're not a Final Cut Pro user, it's just fine. But I'll bring down um, the very edges of this because it brings down some of the color and the whites and the blacks of the image, and I'd like those whites and blacks to be true to color, so. All right, honestly, you can see that difference here. I'll show you the difference of every single layer. So here's what we started with. Here's adding the exposure back in. Here's adding the curves. And here's adding the hue and saturation back in. Um, and overall, that to that, I would probably tweak it a little bit more, but for the sake of time in this video, um, that's a pretty simple, easy way that I color grade my footage. So now let's go to this clip. This clip has very little information. It's a super dark clip. I shot it really dark. We're gonna go back to exposure, bring down those darks. It makes her super dark. 
bring up those midtones and highlights a bit. And then we have to bring my darks back down. Um, let's go do our curves. Add in some contrast. So this contrast on the curves also is going to add in some saturation. If you can tell her skin is getting more saturated by doing that. We're going to move this again. Bring in some of that teal. Um, I'm actually going to go back to the color board. Um, I sometimes do this in the wheels. I'm going to bring, make it a little bit more blue. So I lifted it up a bit. You can see that difference already. Now let's go to hue and saturation curves. Again, I'm going to pull the saturation out of the, the whites and the blacks. Whoa, <laughs> didn't mean to do that. And the blacks. Um, okay, now let's do the skin tone again. I'm going to find the skin tone right here. Go back to the vector scope. Crop in on the skin. Left. Okay, there we go. Now look, this is a really tiny little line because there's not a lot of information in this. So I'll crank up the saturation just so I can read that a bit more. Now you can see that the line is going that way. So we'll go back into hue and saturation, come back to this skin point, and move that to be more accurate on that skin tone line. This is where I'm looking right here. Um, okay, now she's going to be super saturated, so I'm going to bring the saturation back down. Go back, take that crop off. We'll see what that did. Very minor. Change your skin tone just ever so slightly. Um, some things I like to do sometimes, we'll see if there's any blue in the background. Looks like there's some turquoise, so I'll bring some of that out. And I think I'm going to make her skin tone, or her skin, just a little bit more saturated. Very minor changes on this hue and saturation curve. Okay, let's look at the overall effect. Now something I want to show you on this clip, this is pretty simple color grading on this clip, is there's a lot of gross color noise because I filmed it um, so dark and I didn't have the, the best settings. So you can see, that's if I zoom in even more, it just looks pretty gross and, and noisy and gross. <laughs> so I know it's kind of annoying to suggest plugins because you don't have them, but I just want to show you something that I use. It's called Neat Video. Um, I haven't actually found something really better. It works super well, so it's it was worth it for me. I'm going to drag this Neat Video noise reducer onto the clip. I'm actually going to fit this again. There we go. Then you press select to open. Okay, and then we're going to grab um, some of this noise level. You don't want it to say that it's not really uniform. You want to try to place, find a place that is uniform. And then press build profile and apply. And you're going to see that smooth out her skin a ton. So now it kind of slows down your computer. So now you can see that this looks a lot smoother. Um, you can make adjustments in that program if it didn't look exactly the way you wanted, but uh, that makes this clip look a whole lot better. Before, after. Before, after. Pretty simple color grade. Um, nope, didn't use any LUTs, didn't use any of that. It's easy color grades for both of these clips, and it's as simple as that. Again, if you want a more in-depth color grading tutorial from me from all different scenarios, let me know and I'll be sure to make something like that. Okay, so let's get into some real talk. What are some of the things that you might not have thought about that actually will make you a better filmmaker slash videographer? As I mentioned in the beginning of this video, I watch a lot of YouTube tutorials. Something I know about myself is I love to learn, I love to consume information, and I have so much information stored in my brain. But that's the problem. If it stays there and it never leaves into practice, it's useless. It's kind of like the foam packing peanuts in a box. It sort of serves a purpose, but then it's eventually neglected and just stored away. I think the same goes with the information in your head. Yes, it's good to have that information and maybe you can teach it a little bit, but if you don't ever go execute and practice it, then it's kind of like doesn't really serve its full purpose. And so that would be my first piece of advice, to prioritize practicing what you learn. 
Discipline yourself that after you learn so much of something, you go out and actually practice it so that you can get better and apply the knowledge that you have in your brain. Maybe a challenge for you today is to stop after my video and go apply some of the things that you learned from my lighting or color grading techniques. Yes, it's great to get different perspectives and see how other people do things, but it's also not helpful if that's all that you do. So I would encourage you to take the things that you've learned and go put them into practice. And once you've gone out and practiced, come back and learn more and improve again, and then rinse and repeat. Learn, practice, learn, practice. I really do think that this is so important and it will really be one of the things that elevates your filmmaking and makes you so much better. My second piece of advice would be to pay attention to your thoughts. Descartes, if that's how you say a famous philosopher, he once coined the phrase, I think, therefore I am. And the more you think about that phrase, funny, the more profound it is. To be honest, the talking portion of this video has taken me so long. I stayed up to 5 a.m. last night recording an entirely different way of doing this video, and I started to go along the thought path of like, I'm just not good at this. I'm not good at making tutorials, but I've changed my thought patterns. I've recognized my thought patterns and said, you know what? Some of my advice, no matter being a beginner or what in the YouTube sphere, can actually be valuable for someone. And so being aware of my thoughts and the thoughts that I'm having about myself is actually so important. If you think, oh, I'm never gonna be able to be as good as that videographer or that filmmaker, then you won't. I mean, because you're never gonna put into action the things that you wanna do because you already think that you can't. I really do believe that our brains, our thought life is like the main character of our entire life story. I know that's pretty deep, but I really think that our thoughts control the majority of our actions and our perspective on life and so forth and so forth. Also, stop the comparison game. Don't compare yourself to other people. Don't compare yourself to me. Compare yourself, this is a popular phrase, but compare yourself to who you were a minute ago. What you've just watched now has improved your skill just by learning. Be excited about just every day growing and getting better. I'm telling you guys, Doing this stuff on YouTube, it's hard for me. I, even as I say and I watch myself back, I go, I don't know what I'm doing. I feel like I don't know how to talk. I feel like I'd rather just talk to a person and not a robotic camera here. I don't know how to be natural. Listen to my thoughts. Those are a lot of the thoughts that I come up against and they're not healthy. While some of them might be somewhat true, it doesn't mean they have to stay true. And so I could choose to think more positively and, and choose to have the perspective of, oh yeah, I'm growing and that's okay. Believe that you're actually better now for watching this and you're one step closer to where you wanna be. Good job. Okay, well, I can get really passionate about this stuff, but I have one more tip for you and that's to be intentional about what you're learning. I'm really into FPV drones. I've never flown one. I've only watched a million videos about it. But guess what? Right now, I don't have the time to be able to learn FPV. And so if I waste my time watching a ton of video on FPV drones and tutorials while I don't even own one, then I'm kind of wasting my time. Whereas waiting later in my life to when I actually have time to practice FPV droning, instead of having to watch those videos double time now versus when I actually go learn it, I can just choose to watch the things that I want to intentionally apply today. So be intentional about your learning and be intentional about the things that you want to and can do right now. If you don't own a camera but you want to make videos, then practice your storytelling. You can do that for free in your head or just on a piece of paper. These are things that you can do. Be intentional about the areas that you're learning so you don't spend time consuming too much content and wasting your time. Alright guys, well I hope this video provided some value to you. I know it's been a while since I've been here on YouTube. To be honest, I'm buying a home right now, which is pretty exciting, but I've had so much freelance work to help pay the bills. Currently, I'm not monetized on YouTube, so this isn't making me any money, and that's okay. But if you feel so inclined to help support me and get those views up so I can get monetized, I would love if you share and subscribe here on YouTube. You guys are the best. Um, let me know if you want to see more content like this, and don't worry, you'll see more of my storytelling soon. Okay, guys, as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye, guys.